Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back with another video. Um, this is this today's gonna be another quick video. Um, sit down, and talk to you about some kind of video. I'm still working on that that bigger project I was telling you guys about. Um, just to give a quick update on that, um, it's been presenting itself to be quite a challenge because I'm tackling a very big idea, um, and I've done two recording sessions so far and neither of them I felt like were up to um, quality and a quality that I want to achieve with this. So I'm trying a slightly different approach um, in my next attempt and I got some uh, new elements coming in this video. So please stay patient. Uh, the video will be worth it, I promise. But to keep you guys satiated, um, here's another video, uh, and today uh, I want to talk about a, uh, something I got from a subscriber uh, named Mallory, and they asked for several things, uh, to, for me to talk about several things, um, but one of them they asked about was inspiration, what inspires me. And so what I want to do is I want to take a couple of the, my art pieces that I have and um, try and illustrate what I how I make art. So this is going to be more so not just about inspiration, but about my process in general, and um, just to kind of give more context, I suppose, to how I work, and to just kind of give you guys an overview of my my uh, working mind and my art style. So uh, right here, I have Mom teach me to walk, but the first one I'm going to go in an order here. So this is the first one I want to talk about. This one is called. Uh, February Mind, February Mind. Uh, it's called that because I made it in February of 2021. And this is one of my favorite pieces I've ever made um, just because I put in so many details and uh, I was able to basically make uh, use of the entire, all the space. There's like really very little negative space. Um, and this was two years ago. This was made two years ago. So my. Uh, my, I think my my skills and dexterity have certainly uh, uh, improved since that time. This is still a really fun one to make. Um, so I was living in uh, Santa Cruz. I was going to college, and you know, midst of the pandemic, you know, I believe this was when people were starting to get vaccinated. So people were getting a bit more hopeful again, and you know, ready to do the whole outside shenanigans thing. Um, but this piece in particular, I was in a funk, so, you know, or a depression or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I just kind of spent a lot of time with this particular page. You know, I was in my sketchbook and I was just drawing and drawing and drawing. Um, and just, I kind of just started with this. I think I started here, one of these figures here. You can't really see my mouse, but, you know, one of these faces here. And I just kind of kept building off of it. Um, and you could see how you would use a straight edge, a protractor to get the straight lines. And I just kept building in details. And I particularly like this tree. I think this tree looks cool. Um, so like, what is this, Kenneth? Like what, how were you, what inspired you to make this is the question you may be asking. Um, well, it was more so for me when I draw when I paint, or really when I make any kind of art, most of the time I use a very intuitive process um, where I don't really know what I'm gonna make beforehand or what it's gonna be about. For me, the process comes from this um, sort of groove I get into where I just draw and I put things down and I become very decisive in how I uh, build the image, where I'm not, it's like a, a perfect balance of, of thinking, where I'm not overthinking it too much, but also not like just randomly putting things down and seeing what happens, like it, things kind of feel right in their placement, if that makes sense for me, like things feel uh, like they, like this thing should be here. So this drawing is a, a lot of that, like this thing goes here and it fits, you know? Um, and so all these things kind of allude to different parts of my life or different stories or different um, moments or feelings or what have you. 
So for example, this tree you see in the shirt of this guy, this tree is an actual, tr based on an actual tree, of course, uh, in Santa Cruz, in the meadow of the campus. And there's this, just it's these trees that are there and they're kind of like solo trees. And I've had some memories and time sitting under these trees and thinking and being with people and stuff like that. And it being alone, it was sort of like this symbol of um, how I felt at that time. Just like a lone tree on a hill where, I, you know, people don't understand me and blah, 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 and all that, all that jazz. Um, all those kind of lies we tell ourselves when we're depressed, like no one cares about us, no one, um, no one cares about me, I'm just a lone tree. Um, so that's what this, this is. And it's also about, it's also like nostalgia, like a longing for those, that freshman year days where everything was super new and fresh and exciting. Um, this, hence the sun. Um, there's that. Um, these are pieces from uh, a house I would go to quite often um, and hang out at, my friend's house, and I end up living there later on. But this is the balcony right here. This is the side uh, side door. Um, this is the bathroom sink. This is a window. So like putting in that those pieces or putting in like why am I even telling this story is the only text on this entire thing and it's about you know I had the thought when I was telling a story uh, to some people and like it just kind of didn't seem like they were listening so I just wrote that there like literally as I was telling the story and then they didn't seem to actually be listening I wrote it in at that very moment so in a way it kind of captured this immediate feeling like this ephemeral thought that was passing through um, that I wanted to ca capture and that kind of fit in with the general feeling and sensation and narrative that I was kind of going through at that time. And here's another uh, piece of, or of me, of a p person with no shirt on, it's supposed to be me of course, in a, in a room with string lights on the ground, shirtless, laying down. Th like this is just based on a, like a moment where I was laying on the floor in my room and I had all these string lights up and one of them was out. Um, where it's like you could think it's like, oh, counting down uh, life till death or like, you know, not being all, uh, uh, not having all your bulbs fully lit or whatever, you know, some kind of thing like that if you really want to think of it like that. Um, so like, you know, taking these bits of, um, uh, of things that are going on or emotions I'm feeling and just kind of placing them all next to each other to try and paint an image, paint a picture of what's going on in my mind. Um, I could really break, I could take a long time and try and break this whole thing down, but I think for now I would leave that to the viewer to try and um, not even try to because part of it too is like I have my own reasons for these things, but other people will pull in different ideas and connections to these images. And so part of my work uh, and what I want to do is be have people be able to see their own stories being told in, a, in, in me telling my story and then thus kind of creating a capital T truth about um, human existence um, or something like that. You know, like people experience this, you know, and like people go through this it's not just you it's not just me like this is part of the human condition so that's part of why it's kind of cryptic um and I, I think cerebral is the right word for it it's it's just kind of like i want people to look at it and pull out um their own stories through my stories and thus we can have a shared experience and um, feel less alone and being able to identify capital T truth about human existence. So that's, so that's, uh, this piece. So this was 21. Okay. And so I'm going to skip a year to 22 where I got into painting and this was in my senior year and I'm about to graduate. And this is like, I think this is literally like the last piece I made in college. Like this is the very last one before I graduated and I was pretty happy with it I was very proud of it and this is a big piece I think I believe I've talked about this before it's called mom teach me to walk um, and it's a large piece it's on a uh, bed sheet large bed sheet given to me by my um, my professor at the time 
Um, so again, I just started putting things down and uh, I should have brought it up, but there's a process image where you can see that there's like something else here, like, and I ended up covering it up later. Um, so what I did here was I just kind of started putting down the figures, putting down um, things that were happening um, in my mind. And here you could see flowers and the foot vase and the hands and stuff like that where I was just trying to, I don't know, just kind of pull things out. And what I feel like I ended up pulling out was like a, uh, a bit about memory and how these things connect to... Uh, different little moments in my life that um, you know all kind of connect together because they're in the same brain so you know the idea you know like mom teaching me to walk like yeah obviously my mom didn't pick up my legs and do it show me how to walk like I did it on my own but it's an allusion to like like you could easily be like oh yeah mom teach me you know and like kind of just forget that like oh no I actually picked myself up and I did the walking you know so it's like this idea of like reconstructing the narrative of our life and how we construct those narratives can um you know they can inform how we see ourselves and how we view our the con our lot the context of our life and how you know um how that will then affect memories and that kind of thing like this powerful tool we have of rationalization could be used to overwrite our memories and our understanding of the memories and the context and really create a huge bias. So in a way, you know, that's kind of what's happening here. You know, here's my mom, here's me, and I'm, a, I'm you know, this whole idea of the narrative is like, you know, I'm, I was born deficient in some way. And like one of those things has to do with substance abuse, you know, um, and another thing has to do with um, like being, using, like, sacrificing myself to please others you know and like these two things have played a role in my life but obviously they don't define me so the whole idea is like that I tell myself these things or I believe these things thus they become more true versus if I can acknowledge that yeah they happened but they don't like they're not in indicative of my entire being or my entire life um, or how I will always be you know, so like it's this kind of balancing act. Um, so that's kind of like, again, so I paint first, I create first, then I pull the meaning out. So um, while I'm working, I'm thinking about things. I'm thinking about particular, like what's coming to mind as I work, as I'm drawing or as I'm painting, like what is coming to my mind? And so I put those things down, um, or at least I try to. Um, or I put something down, it might not be quite right, but then it kind of pulls out something else. Um, you could also see this guy's dying and all of his memories and stuff are just going away. So it's like, you know, you could view your memories in your entire life as just spaghetti noodles and just electrons and, you know, this very, um, you know, mundane, just, oh, they're just chemicals, you know, but really there's so like, this painting itself is a testament to how that's not even true, like in the sense of like it's meaningless because it's 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 a basic thing, like it's, an, it's just electrons, it's just chemicals, whatever. When everything are just electrons and chemicals and atoms that build up this very complex web of life and energy that, you know, that surrounds us. So, you know, like how could something so mundane create artwork, create beauty, create a... Uh, um, the world we see around us you know how you know so that's just kind of the idea with this so that's the uh what inspired it was just i was on uh i was on a kick i was like i made another painting and i was really excited about it so i wanted to do another painting and this time i decided to use an unconventional surface like a bed sheet and i gessoed it but i didn't gesso the whole thing I only gessoed part of it so some of this is kind of like washed around the edges um so it created this um so yeah, I could, again, I could break more into it and really break it down, but, um, you know, I don't necessarily feel like that's necessary. And again, like I said with the last one, you, you go, I invite you to do that. Like, you see if you can connect it to your own life. I'd be very curious. Leave a comment below if any of these pieces particularly resonate with you where you're like, this reminds me of this aspect of my life or something like that or make your own connection. Uh, so this one is... Uh, called Art Fluencer Museum and 
it is it again I, I just kind of put these things out but some of these things I just kind of this was a smaller service so I was able to kind of just pull together these elements and kind of create a, a bit of a for me a bit of a more coherent idea around it where it's like about my mental health but particularly about like letting envy get to me and letting uh, jealousy drive me kind of thing where um, I get like I'm just in this museum of artists that I perceive as being better than me or more worth attention than I am so like there's the public that you know I would come to resent for not paying attention to me and then here's older Kenny as a security guard which I talked about me being a security guard before um, getting annoyed with like abstract paintings or paintings I think are not bad and like this affects me and kind of just like juts me two ways and then here's me looking at a, uh, a painting and I wrote in the writing the description of this is like imagine like looking at a painting or a picture of someone you love the most but someone had like marked it up and graffitied it all to hell and then realized that you did that yourself or it's like yeah it could be like the person you love the most or it could be you you know like where you're creating this image of yourself and you're doing yourself this disservice of um, saying like oh all these other people are better than me and I'm just a clown I'm just an idiot and then like you know, again, it goes with how, it goes back to like the things we tell ourselves. Um, if we tell our, ourselves enough times, it'll affect what we, um, like how we actually perceive ourselves and how we'll end up being. So it's like a self fulfilling prophecy in that way. Um, you know, this one's a bit more like straightforward in that sense. And it's just kind of like, I was, I was playing with color and stuff. Um, and so, like, that's what this piece is about is like being stuck in this. Um, art space of being dissatisfied and you know the thing about life too that I'm coming to learn more and more is that um, you're never going to be put in a position unless you get extremely lucky and fortunate but you'll never be put in a position where you're, everything's going to be perfect or go exactly as you expect or things will ever be exactly what you want but what you have control over is how you perceive those things how you react to those things and um, then the pl and then what you could do is like the plan, make a plan for how you would change this in your life. Like what immediately can you do to impact and change what's bothering you for the better? You know, like what can you change? And if you what and whatever you can change, change it for the better. So, you know, a lot of my pieces kind of look at that. So again, back to the inspiration, I get inspired by um, my thoughts and my experiences and things that happen and my ideas and my philosophy about art and the world and all that kind of stuff and how we should be as humans um and that kind of just comes out subconsciously and i try and be honest as much as i possibly can in my work like i try and just um you know tell the truth and I, right now with my work i don't think i'm at a point where the truth is uh, evident without me having to explain it. I think I'm sort of in this modem of making, again, very cerebral images where it's like I, this is how I bring out my thoughts and it's not gonna be self-explanatory and people like kind of need an explanation. But then it, part of it goes into it again, like, you know, you can be able to extrapolate your own, your own uh, story from this, so. What do you get out of it? So I don't know if that's like uh, a crutch for making art in such a way or if it's uh, an actual aspect, but that's something I'm working on improving on in the future. So the last thing, the last piece I wanna pull up is a more, most recent one that I finished this past, like it's just a drawing I started, but then um, I just really ended up really liking it. It's been the first piece in a long time that I'm um, particularly happy with or drawing at least hmm. so yeah this is called a uh, funhouse mind shout out to Andrew my boy Andrew for that title and it's sort of going full circle now because here is the February mind sequel so to speak it's um, yeah I mean I'm again I'm just putting down images and thinking about things and then being able to piece them back together um, and all the little, I guess, you know, extra elements you see in between are more about invisible energy and movement and what kind of things that we don't see that influence our lives and 
you know, again, how we let um, our narratives drive where we go or our stress to drive where we go or, you know, like how we, again, narrativize. And it's like, you know, I think of this as my ego and I think this is my, my inner child and how the ego is preventing the inner child from being able to, like, play and how through me having all this stress and through smoking, um, I, you know... I'm damaging these two organs, which are crucial to living and vitality. So, like, how does that affect the art? How does that affect my life? You know, these are people who passed away. And, like, how do they affect my life? And, like, you know, what do they look like? You know, uh, or, or, like, what does that, having people who passed away, like, what does that do to my psyche? What does that do to, to my work? What does that do to my understanding? You know, and then I have these two pieces of text where it's like, despite all of these things happening, all these things I can't see and can't control, challenges arise, yet you got this. And things didn't go how I wanted, but I have accepted that and I have found peace. So it's like these two really powerful ways of dealing with um, a chaotic world where, you know, things will pr like come up and prove to be very difficult to deal with. But as long as you believe in yourself and you just remind yourself that you are going to get through it and you're capable of dealing with it and you and you know how to deal with it, you will be okay. And um, accepting that things will never go exactly how you want them to or the images in your mind might not be realized ever. But if you've learned to accept what's already around you and it just kind of use those images in your head as more of like a reference point than an expectation, you will find peace. Despite if you lived a life with lots of trauma and darkness, as long as you kind of keep this light in your central focus and keep pursuing this this good in your life and keep that around you, you'll be okay. Um, again, like I think about these things and I'm drawing and they just come out. And I have different images that I like to use and used to kind of construct a, a bit of a narrative or just a feeling or a sense of sensation. Um, and again, I'm, I'm working on a, another rendition of this piece right now with color. Um, so that could be fun. So yeah, that's pretty much all, all I really got for you guys. Um, I just kind of wanted to um, take you through some of my drawings and talk about uh, what inspires me and like what I kind of think about some of my artworks and you know, where I kind of hope to go in the future with them, um, and what I've used them for, and it's, you know, been therapeutic, and it's given me something to do that's not just lose my mind, um, also it's been helpful for understanding, and like, you know, it's kind of like, in a way, I see some of these drawings and paintings, and like, why I find some validity in things like tarot, um, or runes, where I don't necessarily practice these things myself or use these things, but I, if you think about them in a way of like kind of hacking your brain a little bit or like using these things as a tool to deconstruct and um, look at the pieces of your life and then put them back together um, and I bet just like reverse engineer your understanding of your situation so you can think more critically about how to approach it. Um, you know, or like what's happening around you, that kind of thing. I think that's powerful um, and can be very helpful um, for understanding your situation and then asking yourself, how can I better deal with it? Um, so for me, drawing and painting are the best ways to do that. And I like using up my own visual language and these things make sense to me and it's fun and enjoyable. And, you know, I get, I get a lot out of it. And it's, I'm very passionate about sharing that kind of idea about art with other people where, you know, for me, art's not just about having uh, a high technical skill or, um, you know, being able to make things look like they look in real life, you know, which is fine. I think those are very valid. Um, and anatomy and all those things are very valid and honestly a huge part of art um, and like just like art history and stuff like that. But for me, what I get out of art and what so many other, so many people in general get out of art is being able to read, like, uh, kind of just explain their life experience in a way that makes sense to them and is most unique to, like, how they actually have um, 
lived their life and what it's kind of like in their head. Um, and you know, you can explain it in so many words, but you'll never truly capture that perfect essence that makes you you. Um, but I think art and visual art and music and just again, art in general, gets us closer uh, to being able to, you know, fully understand that. Not all the way there, but a significant way there, a significant uh, portion of the of the journey there. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Uh, you know, do the things like and subscribe and stay tuned for my my video that'll come out hopefully fairly soon. Um, I don't know how long it'll take. It's gonna be a long video, um, and I think it's gonna it's an important message I want to get out there. So that's why I'm really taking my time with it and really being deliberate and um, about how I, spread, I send this message out. So thank you again for your support uh, and have a great day. Make some art if you can. Peace.